I tried the slow carb diet for 25 days. Over the last few months I tried to build some muscle mass but unfortunately also put on quite a significant amount of body fat as I've been pretty inactive during the coronavirus lockdown. So I was searching for a diet that helps to subtract my body fat without sacrificing much of my lean muscle mass. I'm a decent eater and like to feel full after a meal, so I needed a diet that does not simply restrict portion sizes. And this is when I stumbled upon the slow carb diet. The slow carb diet was originally developed by Tim Ferriss, a human guinea pig and author of best-selling books like The 4-Hour Workweek and The 4-Hour Body. After reading some testimonials, I got pretty excited and motivated and decided to give it a shot. For the next 25 days, I will go slow carb. But before we start, I will try to make this video as detailed as possible to provide some kind of a guide for people who are trying to lose weight and have struggled in the past. So you will also find a lot of additional information down in the description. Let's get started with the video. Let's first clarify what the slow carb diet actually is. It means that all the carbohydrates we eat, we have to eat as slowly as possible. No, I'm kidding, that's not what it means. The idea is that foods rich in simple carbohydrates are not only very calorie dense, but also are digested rapidly and thereby we will feel hungry soon after we ate it. And on top of this, simple carbohydrates will spike our blood glucose levels and thereby spike insulin levels, which leads to fat gain. And by avoiding those simple carbohydrates and focusing on foods that either don't contain carbohydrates at all, or contain carbohydrates wrapped in fiber, we stay more satiated, don't spike blood glucose levels and thereby automatically lose fat. Okay, let's look at the rules. The first rule is to avoid all simple carbohydrates like rice, pasta, bread or potatoes. However, we can eat as much as we like of the following. Veggies, legumes, meat, fish and eggs. We cannot have fruits or dairy products on this diet. There will be one sheet meal per week. And finally, I will do intermittent fasting because I prefer to eat big meals instead of many small meals. This is what we're starting with. I'm at 181 pounds with a waistline of 34.5 inch. Okay, so these are the foods we cannot have for the next 25 days. This includes pasta, rice, oats or wraps. Everything contains too many simple carbohydrates and so we have to avoid them entirely. These are the foods we should also avoid, including fruits, nuts and dairy products. The simple reason is that most fruits contain quite an amount of sugar and your body doesn't really care where the sugar is coming from. Sugar is sugar and it will spike your blood glucose and insulin levels. I would generally advise if you can't go without fruits, go with berries instead of bananas, apples or mangoes because the berries are usually lower in sugar. Then the reason why we don't eat dairy products on this diet is that, for instance, cheese is pretty rich in calories to begin with but also like something like milk and so on can raise your insulin levels quite a bit and the only reason why we don't include nuts in the diet is because they are so-called domino foods and it makes it just really hard to just eat a few nuts i mean if you can eat just a handful of nuts a day and you're good you're a better person than me i cannot if i start eating nuts i eat half a bag and just overeat on calories. All right, and then on this right side here, we have all the food we can eat as much as we like. Well, obviously all kinds of different veggies and then also our legumes like beans, red lentils, or any kind of protein source like white cod salmon, ground beef, any kind of beef, chicken, pork, whatever you like, and eggs. Now I will also allow myself to have some chocolate dessert once in a while all right so i'm gonna stock up on those hide everything on this side let's go morning whenever i go on a diet i usually do intermittent fasting and skip breakfast because i found it pretty easy 
to keep myself full with this coffee and water in the morning and then I will have my first meal of the day for lunch. Okay, I'm up for about five hours now and it's time for the first meal of the day, which will be some ground beef, kidney beans, broccoli and all on top of some leafy greens. It's pretty much just a high protein, moderate fat, moderate carb lunch. They're definitely gonna keep me full thanks to the high volume of the leafy greens and will not make me sleepy in the afternoon. The calories will be blended in here. It's now four hours since I had lunch and I'm slowly starting to get hungry, but before I have my next meal, I wanna get in a workout. So let's get the workout started. I didn't change my workout routine when starting the diet. I still work out three to four times a week by doing heavy weight lifting. I honestly don't really go running except if I really feel like it and except if the weather is nice, so I'm not a big runner at all. However, I split my workouts usually in three body parts, which are chest and shoulders, back and biceps, and legs and abs. If this video gets more than 500 likes, I will put out a very detailed workout plan for free as a link down in the description. Normally I would have some kind of protein shake with berries or bananas after a workout, but since I can't really have it on this diet, I have instead scrambled eggs with some mushrooms and an avocado. And I would generally recommend to not consume any liquid calories if your aim is to lose weight, as some solid food will keep you saturated for much longer. All right, the post-workout meal is ready. We have around 500 calories, moderate protein, pretty low carb, and relatively high in fat compared to our last meal. And now we have one more meal to go for today. All right, time for the last meal of the day, which is some wild-caught salmon with a shit ton of different veggies, including some chickpeas for extra protein, as well as some dark chocolate as dessert. The calories will be as always somewhere here. I think it's a much bigger meal than I had for lunch or as my post-workout meal. I usually prefer to eat big in the evening, which keeps me then full throughout the night. I usually don't count calories. It's also not recommended on this diet. And I'm not a big fan of simply just looking at calories. However, I did it for today and I will do it for a couple more days just to give you guys an idea on how many calories I actually consume, what are the macronutrient ratios. Okay, I decided to count calories on two random days for each week of the diet. And it's actually really interesting to see that on average I consumed around 2000 calories daily and there's not much fluctuation going on there. So it has been pretty constant. If we then look at the macronutrient distribution, we see that I consumed around 106 grams of fat, 86 grams of carbohydrates, and I think 163 grams of protein on average daily. And also there is not too much fluctuation going on. So my diet has been actually very constant from day to day. Now, eating 2000 calories only per day would theoretically put me in a 1000 calorie deficit, at least on days where I work out, which is a fairly big caloric deficit and probably explains why I've been losing weight so rapidly on this diet. Now, I wanna emphasize that a 1000 calorie deficit is actually not so easy to sustain and I highly, highly doubt that I would have sustained it as good as I have on some other diets that would have included, let's say, a big bowl of pasta for lunch or a pizza in the evening. I'm pretty sure that those foods would have made me more hungry and it would have been much, much harder to actually stick to um, eating so little calories, even though calories, again, wasn't the focus. At this point, you might be wondering, what the heck is the difference between slow carb, low carb and keto? And that's definitely a good question. A question I got asked a lot throughout my diet. And the easy answer is quality instead of quantity. We focus on certain foods instead of aiming for a certain macronutrient composition. 
Granted, I pretty much ended up eating a low carb, high protein diet. But at least in theory, I could eat as many carbs as I liked, as long as they were coming from legumes or veggies. Now, sometimes I found myself technically in ketosis based on my blood ketone levels, but unlike my ketogenic diet, I wasn't supposed to eat any cheese or nuts on this diet, and was generally much higher with the protein intake than what is normally allowed on a ketogenic diet. Let's talk about the three reasons why every successful diet should include cheat days. The first one is that this will help you to keep up with your social life while you're losing weight. So for one day a week you can simply forget about eating healthy and forget about losing weight and just enjoy your life a little bit with friends and family and have some normal food. Then the other one, it is a big mental support for your diet. So assume that, assume that your cheat day is on a Saturday and on Wednesday or Thursday you feel really hungry, you feel really weak, you feel like giving up and eating this chocolate dessert. But instead, you just write down what you're craving and you have it on your sheet day. So you cluster the unhealthy foods one day and then you're motivated again to get going and lose the extra weight. And then the third reason is that cheat days will prevent a slowdown of your metabolism. So a major reason why many diets fail is that the metabolism slows down over time and you would need to eat fewer and fewer calories to actually keep losing weight. And many studies have now shown that by including so-called refeeding days into your diet, we can prevent a slowdown of the metabolism. Yesterday was another sheet day where I had a shit ton of carbs, like some burritos for lunch, and we had barbecue in the evening with a lot of bread and also some beer on top. And something I now noticed after the second sheet day is that always the day after the sheet day, I'm actually the hungriest, even though I ate so much yesterday i'm feeling the most hungry today especially now in the morning since i'm doing intermittent fasting and i haven't eaten yet um i'm literally starving so while the sheet day is probably the best day of the week the day after the sheet day is certainly the worst one anyways we're halfway done i'm feeling i'm making good progress so i'm still motivated Coming closer to the end of my diet, I got pretty bored by eating the same food over and over again. And this is also when certain food cravings started. Oh man, I'm craving burritos so badly. Once the diet is over, and it is soon, I will wrap everything I can find in tortillas. Breakfast burritos, sweet burritos, I don't care, I'll eat everything. I think I also have to reduce the amount of beans and lentils I'm eating. I'm afraid I'm becoming a major contributor of climate change here with all the gas I'm producing. Another thing I noticed since I started the diet is that my energy levels are pretty high. So I usually get up around 6 in the morning and I don't have anything to eat until lunchtime. And I'm still running around being fairly energetic. And even in the afternoon, after I had some food, where I'm usually a little bit tired, uh, I don't really feel this afternoon tiredness anymore, which is extremely nice. So I hope that it remains like this for the rest of the diet. Okay, here are a few more easy things that you can do to speed up your metabolism and thereby speed up your diet. The first one is to go on a walk whenever you have any time to burn off some extra calories. The next one is to just be busy start a new hobby or whatever that keeps you from eating and you might even skip meals because you're too busy. Then another big one is to experience some cold exposure. It might already be helpful to just take a cold shower or drink a cold water every now and then. And especially drinking water before a meal might even help you to feel more saturated earlier. Another big one is to eat some fermented food. So there's a lot of scientific research connecting gut health to our metabolism to weight loss. And then, last but not least, drink as much coffee as you can. No, you should probably not do everything I do. I also have to make a few confessions before we end the video. Just two days into the diet, I found an open yogurt in the fridge, so I ended up eating it because I never threw away food. 
And then just seven days into the diet, we had to stay long at work and my boss nicely brought me a beer, which I happily accepted. So already in the first week I violated the rules two times. And then on other occasions I was too lazy to cook and just had some canned beans with some canned tuna with some mustard on top, which technically doesn't go against the rules but was just lazy for my part. However, as you will see in a second, violating the rules every now and then is not a big issue as long as you go back on track and then follow your diet. You don't always have to be 100% strict. Let's see the final results. I tried the slow carb diet for 25 days. And I'm actually pretty happy with the results. <laughs> I lost in total 13.5 pounds and reduced my waistline by about 2 inches. But what actually surprised me the most was how feasible the diet was. It only really got tough at the end, but until then the high amount of proteins and the high amount of fiber kept me fairly full. I had my last workout yesterday and as a reference for weight loss I always do good old bench press. And yesterday I could do 10 reps with 100 kilograms, which is only one rep less than what I was doing before I started the diet. And I think this is really just a minor difference, especially if we consider that my glycogen stores are probably completely depleted by now. I also took some pictures throughout the diet. Here's my progress over time with my weight and my waistline at that time. You can see that especially in the beginning my weight dropped drastically, which was likely just the glycogen stores being depleted. And then at the end I could slim down my waistline. By the way, never trust before and after pictures that have not been recorded at the same position with the same light. This is me yesterday after my workout just with a much better light. Okay, again, I put a lot of extra information and the science behind the slow carb diet in the description, just to keep the video concise. Also, I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumb up, as this tells the YouTube algorithm to distribute it to more people. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.